I want to move on now to late stage comparability uh, of the manufacturing process. And I would love to talk through for our audience and Mimi, perhaps we could start with you. Um, you know, what are the biggest hurdles biotechs actually face overall? And um, I know at our at the top of the call, we talked about risk, which is highly important. And I want to make sure we talk through that too. So the biggest hurdles that biotechs are facing and how can we actually reduce workflow risk? Thank you from the, for the question, Erin. And I'm thinking from, from my perspective or you know, from from what I see based on, you know, internal and external discussions with counterparts in the industry, one of the biggest issues uh, for cell and gene therapies is always how to manage post-approval changes. And, you know, hard to speak from our experience because Roctavian just got approved by the FDA not so long ago. But however, to our mind, really the biggest challenges stem from the fact that the industry largely has not yet been able to clearly tie quality attributes to clinical outcomes. This makes in vitro comparability difficult to do, and there's typically need for additional uh, supplementary non-clinical in vivo animal data or, or clinical data. Fortunately, you know, the analytics are getting much better, and we as an industry haven't yet been uh, able to tie those analytical analytics to clinical outcomes. And this core issues, this core issue makes it very hard to justify the changes without a great deal of data and all manner of quality attributes and really all of which may or may not be relevant at the end. It's also the reason why the analytical suite used for product development must be well controlled early in development to give confidence that what was developed early on is the same at the commercialization stage, at least on what we can measure. Not knowing the factors that are considered for acceptability of post-approval change management protocol at the time of licensure and post-licensure for cell and gene therapy products is another challenge. And uh, you know it could be addressed by a cell and gene therapy product specific Q and A guidance, you know, focused on post approval changes or PACMP acceptability that may be helpful. And and you asked a question on how best to reduce the workflow risk. You know, again, from from my perspective, we as an industry would just have to figure out the science to more clearly tie quality attributes to clinical outcomes. I'm um, not sure that there's much more that can be done from a regulatory perspective just yet or other than maybe giving some leniency for changes that must be made to ensure continued supply of the product, to ensure patient access, patient safety, or, and also to incorporate cutting edge novel technology to make the product safer, manufacturing process more efficient while ensuring comparability. And again, you know, a cell and gene therapy specific guidance or a Q&A for the elements that FDA would typically consider to be established conditions for different product modalities within the cell and gene therapy space. So, you know, established conditions for AAVs versus for CAR Ts. Now, that kind of information would be helpful um, so that sponsors are aligned with what FDA would typically consider to be established conditions based on the risk based paradigm set forth in the regulations and the recommendations contained in the guidance uh, regarding post approval changes. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, and that was really detailed, I really appreciate it. Um, Bob, I wanna be able to give you the opportunity to also uh, certainly in agreement with, but also perhaps your ideas too on the biggest hurdles that biotechs are facing, the work, how to re reduce workflow risk, excuse me. And then I'd also like to address, you know, how these challenges are actually affecting patient safety. Okay, I think that the uh, the latter point you made is uh, very important, and that requires uh, sufficient resources uh, to develop that uh, manufacturing uh, process that's rigorous and robust, but also know your product. Uh, what are uh, products in, in your particular area, uh, and what are those particular uh, potential consequences? And so I bring that up in that uh, there are many products that uh, undergo uh, gene editing, the CRISPR-Cas9 systems, uh, the uh, base pair editing, uh, the prime editing now. And so with these types of edits, there are changes and there can be off-target effects, meaning that it can affect uh, other cells and actually can uh, produce malignancies. And uh, it's been known that uh, several of the products uh, have been uh, reported 
uh, to actually produce malignancy in, uh, in patients. And so how to monitor for that and, and continually to monitor that uh, risk potential. And uh, there are particular uh, testing that will look at the next generation sequencing uh, to look at those particular uh, effects and also uh, effects on genes that could be uh, tumorigenic. And so you can see that uh, with the gene edited products and, and also uh, utilizing uh, uh, lentiviral vectors, uh, they can cause that problem. And a, a recently approved product for a rare uh, a pediatric uh, disease is known to produce malignancy in, uh, that was reported in three patients prior to approval. Now the product was approved and there was a lot of work done to characterize uh, those uh, tumorigenic uh, uh, the uh, manipulation and changes uh, that occurred. Uh, however, even with that occurrence, uh, the advisory committee and then finally the FDA said uh, the benefit to those individual patients outweighs this particular risk. Although looking at it to, to monitor it and to find out is there any way to uh, identify that particular risk uh, proactively to prevent that in patients. And so I was always looking at that. And I think it's very important to uh, keep attuned to various products and the safety profile and then to monitor that. And could it be due to uh, a manufacturing change? Could it be something that you could avoid? And uh, looking at that preclinically uh, or even in the clinic for monitoring uh, patients. And I think that's very important because uh, patient safety is the uh, of the utmost concern for everyone.